welcome back to my favorite tropes on Speeder TV. No one requested this or anything, but this is a Star Wars and Spider-Man time of year. Maybe more last week than this week, but you know, whatever. What is a bittersweet ending? As always, we're going to tvtropes.org for our answer. Even though, like, I, I know you know what it is. It's not super complicated, but let's talk about it. You know those stories where your heroes win at the end, but they're just kind of sad? And you're kind of sad watching it, but you're happy they won, but it's, it's over, but... You're just kind of exhausted. Maybe it was a Pyrrhic victory. Maybe someone really important died along the way, or something happened where things won't be the same, even though you won. It's not a downer ending where, I mean, you just lost, but it's definitely not a happily ever after either. It's bittersweet. So for some examples, and we're talking about endings, of course, so a spoiler warning for, I guess, these things that I'm listing on the screen and might make kind of a short list so I don't have to list too many things. I mean, um, so I can go in depth about things. That's that's why. Uh, let's start with Star Wars, uh, Return of the Jedi. The good guys win, essentially. Darth Vader turns and Anakin's redeemed. But you know, you uh, you can't un-Vader <laughs> the good and bad of his legacy linger. And it's probably even more bittersweet now than it was when it first came out because now we know that those last few minutes before Anakin died was really like the only time he wasn't a slave of some sort. Oh, and you know, somehow Palpatine returned. Then, if you go forward and also backwards, the endings to all of the prequels could be considered bittersweet, but maybe especially Revenge of the Sith, which is mostly bitter with Order 66 and then Anakin becoming Darth Vader, and Padme dying in childbirth and all this hope being lost, but of course, a new hope was born, and you know, that's 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 nice. And you can also say uh, The Force Awakens, uh, Rise of Skywalker, which I still haven't seen, uh, Rogue One, because you know, the heroes win, but all the main characters die. And even most people's favorite scene in that movie where, you know, you're rooting for the rebels in general, but Darth Vader's so cool that you kind of have to root for him because he's just too cool. And, you know, it's like, uh. All of the Sam Raimi Spider-Man movies have pretty bittersweet endings. The first one ending with, you know, Spider-Man saving Mary Jane and the nighttime field trip children, but at the expense of his best friend's father, his potential relationship with Mary Jane, the stress of his relationship with Harry, and, you know, all of this culminating in a funeral but also that uplifting final swing, you know? And then Spider-Man 2 ends with, you know, the, again, Spider-Man largely saving the day, but Dr. Octavius sacrifices himself along the way, and of course, Spider-Man saves MJ again, and they're together, and it's 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 kind of nice, even though she kind of you know, left her wedding for it, kind of kind of rude, and Harry's found the Green Goblin stuff, and that can't end well, and another great uplifting final swing, but... MJ's tinge of possible instant regret, no playlist, it's, uh, it, it, it feels weird, right? Like, can I be happy right now as I look at the credits? It's hard to know, because that look is, like, so quick, and it's like, what do you feel? And, of course, Spider-Man 3 ends with, again, Spider-Man saving the day, but this time, and, of course, saving Mary Jane, I guess. But, uh, you know, Harry dies this time, and... Uh, I guess Venom blows himself up, and uh, Sandman, yeah, the, it's sad, but he gets to go, which, that's, how do you arrest Sandman, I don't know, it's a bittersweet sting of forgiveness, along with even more loss, but also redemption, and it's, it's a lot of stuff going on, it's, it's Spider-Man 3, there's a lot of stuff going on, and this time there's no final swing, just a sad, yet sort of comforting dance, a lot of dancing in this movie. Of course, The Amazing Spider-Man ends with Captain Stacy dying to help Spider-Man save the day and making him promise to keep going out of it, and Peter not attending his funeral and all that, and uh, it's, it's so sad, Gwen's so sad, and it's like, you save the day, but again, at what cost? But then, uh, <laughs> he implies he's gonna, you know, break the promise, which, you know, ending your movie on your hero breaking a promise to a dead man is kind of weird. And of course, it's Gwen Stacy, so you know that can't end well. So again, Amazing Spider-Man 2, <laughs> of course, that doesn't end well, because then Gwen dies, which is very sad, and is more bitter than sweet, but eventually Spider-Man makes his return, and the little kid doesn't have to fight the rhino, so that's that's nice. And even Spider-Man Homecoming, uh, the vulture, he's, he's alive and all that, but it's still bittersweet to have to see Liz and her family's life kind of get ruined and they have to move and all that. Far From Home is more of a bittersweet beginning, but No Way Home, I mean, <laughs> Spider-Man saves the day, but no one knows who Peter Parker is anymore, and Peter Parker is on his own and sad and depressed like we want him, and broken, sad, and alone. And I didn't expect this to uh, only be Star Wars and Spider-Man, but I wanted to prioritize them. This is already longer than most of these are, so I'm gonna get out of here. Thank you so much for watching. Uh, what, oh, it's been too long, what do I say?
Uh, like this video if you like it, dislike it if you dislike it, be honest with yourself. Subscribe if you're new, hit that notification bell to let your speeders not single when I upload. Wash your hands and make this ending a little sweeter, please. Just wash your